Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Songwriters Across Texas podcast, where we get to know musicians through their stories and hear some of their music. I'm your host, Carl Anderson, and today we're broadcasting from Arlen Studios in Austin, and my guest is Violet Leah. <laughs> Violet Leah grew up on a farm two hours north of Austin, and even as a kid, she had music on her mind. She sang in the choruses, learned how to play instruments, and ended up going to music school. From there, it was to Korea, and after several successful years there, she decided to move to Austin and hooked up with the band Madam Radar. She's going to start us off with a song called Home. Welcome to the show, Violet. Thanks for having me. Am I, do, I, do I talk there? <laughs> yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here. Yeah. 
That's beautiful. I would... Thank you. Um, uh, let's jump. Like, I want to jump right into sort of like that that song. You is it old or new? It's newer, right? It's old. It's oh. a yeah. I actually wrote that song. God, it's probably been 10, 11 years ago now. <laughs> I, I've, for I've seen you guys play as Madam Raider. I've mm -hmm. seen you guys play quite a bit. That one's less familiar to me, or I didn't recognize yeah. it. I was gonna. I made it a point today to try to pick songs that I've never recorded. So oh, that's great. a song that's never been put on an album. Doesn't have a home yet. So even though, which is ironic because it's called Home. <laughs> that is ironic. Do you want to talk a little bit about what that song means or how? It yeah, came about? and actually, I lied. We ha I have recorded that song. It's just hasn't been something in the like with Madam Radar. That's what I meant. Like I see. Yeah, I, it was with my old band, um, my previous band, Poco Lambro, and uh, we recorded that in Busan, South Korea. And there's even a really awkward music video. Because during the time that we were recording it, I was in the process of breaking up with one of the guys in the video and starting to date another one. <laughs> and they're both in the video. So if you ever want to see it really awkward, is that, is <laughs> go it, check we it out. find that on YouTube? Yeah. yeah. Actually, what, I mean, what, what's the name? What, what was the name of the band? <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah, Poco Lambro. It was a Poco Lambro. Yeah, we were a name. duo based out of Lubbock, Texas. And we were together for about five years. And we had a lot of fun. But, you know, everything, all good things come to an end. Sure. It was. Uh, you went to music school, uh, so you, uh, by the time you were done is when you made the move to Korea, mm -hmm. right? So, And where did you go to music school again? Texas Tech University in Lubbock, Texas. Te uh, Lubbock. Yeah, I love Lubbock. I don't know why I get so much hate. Like, I think it's a really great city, and there's something in the water there, like just so much talent just uh, concentrated. Uh, so you liked it in I Lubbock. I loved Lubbock. Compared to the town I grew up in, which I'm not going to name, like Lubbock was like New York City to me. <laughs> were there music stores and everything? It, there is just live music all the time, like morning, noon, and night. You can find somebody incredible playing anywhere you go, and the venues are really good to, you know, their musicians, and I just, I really like that, you know, and the community there was really cool, and that's where I just kind of started cutting my teeth as like a, a performer, like a kind of at bars and stuff right. versus being on a in a choir or a right. musical or things like that. That's usually, yeah, it's usually about the age if it's going to happen for you that you move from the, the stages mm -hmm. and, and to, the, to, to the bars. Yeah. Um, That's cool to contemporary. Where, was it, what was that like for you discovering the that world, the bar world, as a, because you were studying <sighs> yeah. opera, right? Yeah, I was studying opera, but I was getting really sick of it because it was just, I, I realized it wasn't really my passion. You know, and we'd we'd be in the music school for like 14 hours a day, and then I'd go to the parking lot exhausted, and my friends would all be blasting like you know, like Mozart or something like that. You know, just uh -huh. opera, and I'm like, I can't listen to another note of opera. Like I I just can't do this, and I realized it probably shouldn't be my career if I you know if I got sick of it so quickly. Right. So. Um, yeah. Right, because of the constantness. I mean, it, like with with your band now, you guys work hard and mm -hmm. you guys drive long distances and you guys, you know, you put in the hours. You got to love it. Yeah, you really do. And even when you do, sometimes you don't because it's just it does become a job. Of course. It feels like oh, it, so. and it, you know, things can get ugly out there. <laughs> yeah. Bands break down, money runs out. Yeah. Somebody tries to break into your car or whatever. And there's a million things that could go wrong. Oh, yeah. We've had some pretty epic band fights. It's great. It brings you closer it, together, though, once you survive it. It does. It does. When you left music school, you were there. You got a degree. Mm -hmm. And and then was it – you had a plan from there to go right to Korea? No. So I um, – I was kind of dabbling in the singer songwriting thing, mm -hmm. in, like on the side, and um, I found myself. I had written like three songs that I could barely play on. Like I sucked. I was so bad, but I thought I was so good. And so I, with three songs under my belt, I started going to different bars. Like, okay, you should totally book me here, not knowing anything about the scene. But um, I'll never forget <laughs> this one bar in particular. The lady was not very nice. The owner, you know, I was trying to you know book, get myself booked, and she had a, like a place card on the table, and she turned it towards me, and she's like, "This is what we do around here," and it was this guy, Anthony Garcia, and I was like, "Well, who's this?" who's this guy? Like, you know, I had some, I was like, you know, I could do whatever he does. And, but I ended up meeting him in the studio, like just by happenstance. I'm like, Oh, you're that guy. You're what Lubbock does around here. But we, anyway, <laughs> but we ended up starting to learn some songs together and we really had chemistry. And then, yeah, he was really kind of the one that got me into the music scene. So once we, in Lubbock. yeah. And then once we became a band, he really wanted to go to Asia. And so I was like, well, I, 
I'll go, I guess, you know. So that's what brought me there. <laughs> had but so it was his idea and you had never you had never really thought much about it. I had it. never been out of the country. Uh-huh. So were you jumping to like did you feel like getting out of Texas at all like you know kind of thing or I you... was actually really I really didn't want to go cuz I had just started you know getting finding my footing and and really being in the scene was fun but he had been doing it you know he was 11 years older than I, I was so uh-huh. he was burnt out he was ready to move on and try something new so I was like well I mean I'll go with you and it ended up being yeah, super fun and cool yeah you were yeah you had fresh energy too with you and you guys had chemistry so yeah. it was easy I hope he doesn't to... mind that I'm name dropping him but I I, I mentioned him a lot because I really do owe like a lot of where I started and where I am now to him so yeah I'm sure he doesn't <laughs> <laughs> and the band was called Poco Lombro yeah post to Hoka La Mesa Brownfield it was all like the surrounding areas in Lubbock all right, <laughs> and in, so tell what was the, what was the Korean scene like? It was really cool. Like the the expat scene there, the music um, they were just kind of starting to to develop. And when we came in there, and we were like, "Hey, we want to get paid." By the way, because nobody was getting paid to play, it was all just kind of a jam. But we came in, and we were professional, and we're like, "No, you're going to pay us if we're going to play here." And then other bands were like, "Well, if they're getting paid, we should get." And so it kind of started this whole like new thing. And um, for a while there, we had a really great like fun music community and we were all really supportive and just jammed it's a lot kind of like the music community we have here like all of our bands are friends we all know each other and support each other and we we had that like a mini version of that in busan too that's so, great yeah i didn't realize that was going on there but but, but and it, do you, that must feel good to be like well you know we, when we showed up no one was getting paid and we started and know, i can say that with 100 percent accuracy i'm not exaggerating so <laughs> and that what was that like 2012 13 something? the 2008 2009 2008 9 and you were mm-hmm. there for seven or eight years yeah six or seven i'd say closer to okay yeah came back in 2016 were you done with it were you ready to come home i had to come home i was partying you think i party hard here i was partying way too hard there like they don't have last call they don't, oh, yeah, yeah they don't have like liquor laws. Like you can go yeah. into a store and buy a bottle of vodka at, you know, two, two o'clock in the morning right. <laughs> on any given day of the week. So right. I had to get away from that. You were, you were, yeah, you were running hard and you just went, okay, yeah. so need a little more structure. It was too, it was too much fun. Uh, well, that might, the, we, the last interview I was doing with Bob Schneider, we were talking about, uh, you know, like our own biography titles Mm -hmm. too much fun might be yours (laughs) yeah (laughs) still trying to figure out how to balance that out (laughs) you've tried to balance you try you're always trying to figure out how to balance you know i mean that's the gig yeah it's a good gig you only live once i keep telling myself it's like you need to slow down blah 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 but it's like you know what i'm still young like i'm gonna have fun now and it's not that you need to slow down (laughs) you just need to get sleep you know like you you said you do like you know i stay in bed till two yeah that's Nothing wrong with that. Your midnight is my 8 p.m. That's really what it is. That's so. been a night all my whole life, and that's exactly what it was. And I've had more people that try to make you feel crazy or mm-hmm. like you're doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but I'm guarding you guys while you're sleeping, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I do feel a little bit like a loser, though, because, you know, Kelly, our bandmate, she, her and her husband, Kelly Jace, Green. get up every day. It doesn't matter how late we're up, at like 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, because they have dogs that they right. have to take out and walk. So I'll wake up at, like... Two o'clock in the morning or p.m. and she sorry didn't mean to touch the mic and she'll have texted like a wall of text to the band group like I booked three shows today and we've already been for a walk and blah 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 and like what are you and I just wake up and I'm like no <laughs> it's two o'clock <laughs> and the first test the first text is like eight o'clock in the morning I'm like you're crazy <laughs> well that's right but they have dogs mm-hmm. dogs will force you mm-hmm. to be get up mm-hmm. unless you want dog poo yeah. in your house that's fair. That is fair. It's not good, but it's fair. My cat's poop in a box, and I clean it twice a day. And You're yes. a cat gal, that's right. I am. And you just got a new one? Yes. What is that? His name's Marley. He's a little black kitten, and he's adorable, really sweet. Where so, did he come from? We had some friends that had a litter just out on the farm, and we were like, well, we've been thinking about getting a kitten, so we did. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I got a kitten recently myself, and I didn't know I wanted one, but it's so awesome. Yeah. It's a little Siamese. Oh, sweet. Yeah, she's cute. Gravy. <laughs> we have a oh, dog named Biscuits and that's a cat perfect. named Gravy. They get along? They do. They wrestle. It's the cutest thing ever saw. They're like the same size. They're both really like that big. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So we're on pets. We've covered pets. <laughs> covered Korea, pets, music school. Um, 
You, you said from an early age, you told me in another interview that from mm -hmm. an early age that when you were starting off singing as a kid that you were kind of the one that would learn the part and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, then show up and close the book and, like, be bi yeah. all big about it. And there are probably kids in the chorus that were I was obnoxious. At you like, I was obnoxious, yeah. I like to show off because I, I could – I started with poetry and I would memorize the entire, like, poetry book – because it was just so much fun and then I moved to music like when we had my first music class I just fell in love and of course we had these books that we would go through with all the songs in them and I like I had all the songs memorized and like you could I could sing everything word for word and I mean I still I, I'm still that way like any Disney song you want to throw at me I, it doesn't matter how long it's been since I've heard it, I could sing you every every word every note from beginning to end so it's it just a, it's like there. one of the only like things I can say confidently that's a talent of mine. everything else I'm like ah. but memorizing stuff that's amazing. Yeah. But so that was just a gift, really. Like it's not like it, it, you don't have a trick. It just stays. I think in it there. just came from like being really poor and we didn't have anything else but books. Like when I was little, so I was obsessed with them, and I would just like front to back, like re obsessively read the same book over and over again because I didn't have anything else to do. Right. <laughs> we didn't have like a TV or anything, and so um, yeah. So you'd start to learn have mm -hmm. it recited or something. Yeah, ex that, that, that way that my mom didn't have to read it to me. I could read it to my brother, my little brother. You know, we didn't have to rely on her to be there. It's like, right. I can tell you the story. I got it, you know, so. Oh, cool. Yeah. And so music was just sort of the same. It was just. It like, was even better because it was easier to memorize the words when you have a melody and a rhythm to them. You know, it makes it even easier. Were you learning songs out of a songbook? Mm-hmm. From that's how you were learning yeah, how to well, play music? Yeah, well, our music, we, we, had a, we had a music class and we had these really oh, cool right. songbooks. And so that's, oh, cool. and he had like, I remember the first time he ever showed us a CD, it blew my mind. He was like, watch this. And he went over to the sink and he like ran water over it. And then he like patted it down and put it in and it's, it still played. And we were like, we thought it was magic. It was like, like mind blowing. But, was the program, your music program, was it a, a, a really big or? Uh... I don't think so. I think it was just basically the, the class was structured to where we had a book and he would put the CD in or a tape before or whatever it was. We just open it to a certain page and we'd all sing the songs together, you know. And sometimes he had like little um, uh, choreography that would go with it. There were certain songs where you would like crawl through a cave and stuff uh, like that. But yeah, that was it. Was just fun. I always really enjoyed music class. It was like my favorite. Right. It was just that up until you know in the sixth grade, it's the first time you get to pick an elective, and we got band, art, or choir. And I picked art because I really loved to draw. And I and um, so I signed up for art class, but turned out nobody signed up for choir but six people. And the choir director walked into our packed art class. It was so packed, some of us didn't even have desks. And she was like, we only had six people sign up for choir. Would any of you consider? And I was like, oh, I felt so bad for her. And so I went and I auditioned for choir. And um, and that changed everything. And from, the, from sixth grade through college, I was always in some kind of a chorus. I did all the competitions, solo and ensemble and all that stuff, and then majored in opera, so... Were you getting, like, a lot of positive recognition, too, for it? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I'd say it was the first time in school that kids were, you know, started to be nice to me because mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I was kind of bullied, and so in return I was a bit of a bully. But then once I started, like, singing and doing talent shows and stuff, it was, like, the one thing that I had. It was like, okay, well, maybe you're not such a nerd. <laughs> when did you pick up your first instrument? Uh, I picked up my first instrument when I was four years old. It was a guitar that my mom gave me for Christmas. And um, I, I put so much hours and hours into that thing, like just memorizing the songs on it and playing all the little solos and making up my own songs. I loved that thing. So, And I really wanted piano classes, but we were poor and we lived out in the middle of nowhere. So that, you know, driving into town for anything other than essentials was out of the question. But I would have loved to have had piano lessons, you know, from a young age. It might have changed my main instrument now. I don't know. <laughs> Well, you ended up learning a lot of different uh, uh, instruments, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, like, I think that piano is kind of a gateway instrument for sure. Yeah, it helps wrap yeah. your head around other things. Did you ever get into drums? I, you know, I mean, in what sense? <laughs> <laughs> I knew when I said that, I was like, oh, I left that open. I left that open. No, I've had a, a couple of my drummer boyfriends that I've been through have taught me a thing or two, but I'm not good at it. Maybe. It's well, just too much work to practice. It's too loud. It's, you know, too many parts. I'm too lazy for that. I like the guitar. I feel I got you. I feel like I know uh, several, like, guitar players that started on drums, and they were like, it was important to start on drums because it taught me some yeah, that makes rhythm, sense. and that they'd go from the drums to the piano, and it was mm -hmm. a, there was a similar thing. But, yeah, yeah. I, everyone 
got their own unique thing. Yeah. I think I'd like to hear a song, too. Okay. I'm going to shift positions a little bit. This yeah. leg's starting to fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> so I'm going to try not to change too much. So uh, this song is called She's a Lady, and it kind of goes back to I was talking about I was bullied in school, therefore I became the bully, and um, just to protect myself because I had to stand up for myself, but I think I overcompensated a bit, and I wrote this song about it. It's just kind of the angry headspace I was at when I was a kid. It's called She's a Lady. She's a lady, I'm an artist, but they love her. That's the hardest, lost a rib here. Heart is breaking, lost my kid here. Heart is aching, family's ugly. Need some headroom, screw the party. And the bridegroom, pew by pew, row by row, choir singing. Kids are slow, did you love it? Yes, did you hate it? Yes, did you hurt it? Yes, did you break it? Yes, at least I'm honest. Never said that, I'm a failure. You're a spoiled brat and no. Giddy up. Yeah. It's a driving song. And um, it's supposed to be a little clunky, you know, it's about kids beating each other up on a playground, so you know. <laughs> uh, how does that so did you see that? And did you just did you see something specific that made you want to write that? I was in it. I was the one get, getting beat up or doing the beating up <laughs> <laughs> on a daily basis. I was coming home every day with like bruises and black eyes, like hair pulled out, like Damn. Yeah. I was a I got into it as a kid. <laughs> well, that's is what it is now when you write that song do you write the words first you know a lot of times the at least the songs that i keep are ones that it happens naturally it kind of happens simultaneously and so um i mean there are times where i write the words first but it's very rarely usually i'll just like have a melody or something or the melody and words are just there already and um i just find what chords work under it and go from there oh wow um you write on the guitar 
sometimes. I mean, I use the guitar more as a tool to find the chords I want, but most of the time it's just to hear. Like I'll, I used to have a tape recorder and mm. then a digital tape recorder. Right. And then as technology, now I use my voice memos, but I'll just hear a melody and, and lyrics and I'll sing it into the, the voice memo. And then when I get time later, I'll just go through and figure out what key I should put it in and then, you know, go cool. from there. So. That's, that's like a little file system. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Um, let's talk about uh, Madam Radar and, okay. and your uh, your involvement and how you found them. Uh, it's a really uh, it's a very cute story. <laughs> well, they were the at the time the Texas KGB, and um, I had taken a break from music when I came back to Austin. Funny enough, I I moved to Austin because I got an opportunity to be in a corporate cover band. And I really didn't like it. <laughs> I just I didn't like having to sing to backing tracks and mm. wear the clothes. I just I'm not I'm not the kind of person that dances around. I'm just not. That's not my personality. Nah. So, didn't work for me. And um, I decided to just take a break from the music scene altogether because I was so burnt out. And um, I went to uh, bartending and waitressing. So I did that for two years. And the, but the whole time I was doing that, I would you know out of curiosity check Craigslist or check Austin Community and just see if there were any bands I was interested in. And uh, one morning, I was, like, having some cereal, and I saw this band. It was the Texas KGB. They were looking for a bass player. And I'm like, I don't really pay, play bass, but they were all so pretty, you know, and young. And um, I watched a couple of their videos on uh, YouTube, and their, I thought their harmonies were great, and their songs were interesting. And, and I was like, this could be something that I could really vibe with. They looked to be around my age, and, you know, mm -hmm. the drummer was really cute. <laughs> and um, <laughs> But so, yeah, I sent them a, a just a, a thing, like a, a – an application, I guess, like right. with just a link to my YouTube videos and everything. And um, Kelly got back to me right away. She was just like, oh, when can we meet? And blah, blah, blah. And I, I was like, listen, like before, just so you know, um, if I do join your band, I want to be a part of everything. I want to be a part of the songwriting. I want to be a part of the singing. Like, I don't just want to play the bass. Like, that's, you know, I want to do more than that. And she was like, that's perfect. Like, that's what we, we would love that, to have more of a collaborator than just like a hired gun. Right. So we met at Radio, um, which is one of my favorite places yeah. in Austin, over by what, Manshack and William Cannon ish? The Veracruz Tacos. Mm -hmm. mm. Delicious. So mm. we met there, we hit it off, and then we had a rehearsal, and I was in. So. Yeah, I love their 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 story. Is just like they that they had all these qualities, you know, that they were looking for. And you seem to have everyone, and they thought they were being punked. Yeah, they thought they were being catfished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they. They're like, this is not. They thought some big dude was gonna come in, and be like, sorry. Yeah. Will you hear me play? <laughs> But it was you. Yeah. And so you guys hit it off, and it was immediate, kind of, and you've mm -hmm. been together ever since. Uh, and you and you started off with kind of doing, you do one of your songs, one of Kelly's, one of Jace's, and you got to a point where now you're starting to write together. Yeah, right? I'm trying to. I mean, we still pretty much, if it's a Kelly song, she wrote it, and but we're trying to find, like, more of our own sound, so... I'm figuring out now, or what, I think what we're all figuring out is not every song we write individually has to be a Madam Radar song. Right. You know, we can write songs, and it can be our own an acoustic song, or it can belong somewhere else, but we're trying to be more selective about which songs are specifically for Madam Radar, you know? That makes sense. I, I think one of the things I'm so impressed about Madam Radar is that every single one of you is really, is so talented. You could have your own band or be your own band, but, and then that, and you do tend to your own natural needs so it's like let's you're never squelching each other mm -hmm. it's like just we're just enhancing each other i think it's kind of a rare thing mm -hmm. from my perspective i'm like I, I don't see that very often with that amount of talent that gives each other space but keeps each other close mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's brilliant how many recordings do you have well, so we, far. when I joined the band, we put out an album together, uh, Welcome Home, and we recorded that at 512 Studios. And then mm -hmm. we put out another album in 2019, mm -hmm. and uh, that was right before the whole world shut down, Madam Radar. and uh, That was still under Texas KGB, though. No, that was under our new name, Madam Radar. Oh, in, t 19, in 19, right after yeah. you changed your name. Mm -hmm. okay. And we recorded that out with Gordy Quist at Finishing School. And then, yeah, this will be our, we have another album coming out in July, also with Gordy Quist from Band of Heathens at Finishing School. Gordy and that's going to be under Madam yeah. Radar Speaks. Speaks, nice. Um, is it already, did you say it was already recorded? Uh huh. And getting mastered this week. So, Wonderful. ready to go. All right. When's, when's it going to drop? July. 
July. Mm-hmm. End of July, early August. Did you guys end up doing a cover or two? Just one. Which I don't one? know if I'm allowed to say. Oh, no. I don't know. Maybe just just in case I'm not allowed to say, I just won't. Let's uh, let's not get. You can in ask trouble. Kelly. I will ask Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, she's going to be in here with a little bit. So you have this really successful Madam Radar where you're collaborating, but then you have the pack, the P A A C K. Mm-hmm. Uh, we guys play live once a week down Thursday's happy hour at the Saxon Pub, and. And it, it is packed. <laughs> it lives up to its name. Um, and you guys are song swapping. Yeah. Um, we're just, we're a girl group. You know, each of us has our own project. And um, we get together once a week and play, we swap out songs. And that's, I mean, that's another source of inspiration for sure. I've had some songs that I brought to Madam Radar that didn't necessarily work, mm-hmm. that I brought to Pack and they've worked like beautifully. So right. that's that's also a fun outlet to have. Plus, just some really strong females in my life to, because like I mentioned before, as a kid, I, di- I didn't really have many friends, and especially not female friends. Mm-hmm. I just didn't get along with girls. And I know every girl says, that. I don't like other girls. But like, I don't know. They just didn't like me because I wasn't like them. <laughs> so, so yeah, you, so you got a pack. Now, yeah. how, did, how did exactly did it come together? Well, I think, I think originally, and you'll have to, you know, clarify with Kelly, but it was like, Andrea McGee from uh, Beat Root Revival, mm-hmm. and Amanda Ruby Dice, who has her own project. Like they, it was their original idea, and so they got together and they put together Pack, which is why there's no V in it. But then Amanda got too busy, like with her schedule and her solo stuff, really started going off. So she's like, I can't do this anymore. So they needed another bass player, and mm-hmm. Kelly was like, Well, you know, Violet. So right. <laughs> and that's right. that's that's how that happened, and cool. we've been playing in that format ever since, and trying to figure out how to fit a V. <laughs> <laughs> over the A, that's been that's been tricky. But well, I'm so happy you came in here today, and that we had this conversation. If you guys want to see Violet, every it's like I said, every Thursday at the Saxon Pub at six, playing with the pack. Madam Radar has always got a gig mm-hmm. somewhere, and they are so fun. All both of them are so fun to watch. Look look for the album coming out soon. Uh, thanks again. Thanks for having me. All right, we're gonna close out with a song. Lay it down to rest It's burning in my chest Hollow little well in me This hollow little well Hollow little well in me This hollow little well You gave me Fever when you told me, when you told me that something's wrong, when you told me that something's wrong, when you told me that something's wrong, and I believed her when she showed me, when you showed me that you were gone, when you showed me that you were gone, when you showed me. You were gone Well, your familiar face Strangely out of place What is to become of me now? What is to become? Oh, what is to become of me now? What is to become? You gave me a fever when you told me told me that something's wrong when you told me that something's wrong when you told me that something's wrong and I believed her when she showed me when you showed me that you were gone when you showed me that you were gone when she showed me that you were gone for me would you cry for me would you die for me and would you sympathize with me if you knew that you gave me a fever when you told me when you told me that something's wrong when you told me that something's wrong when you told me that something's wrong
ladies and gentlemen, thank you again so much for being here. If you guys want to watch the whole episode on the, our YouTube channel, Songwriters Across Texas, please go there. And also, Madam Raider has a full episode. Check it out. Mm -hmm.